you know, traditional therapy for CLL was chemotherapy that was given in the vein, so intravenous chemotherapy, usually consisted of more than one drug. Um, and we still use a lot of that therapy. However, we've shifted away from some of the chemotherapy because they tend to be more toxic and there's more side effects with that chemotherapy. And we've moved into this, abrutinib is called a BTK inhibitor. So it's a novel targeted therapy, it's oral, so it's a pill. Um, and so this really has changed the way we've treated patients. Um, but it's a different strategy. So in the era of old chemoimmunotherapy, you got a course of therapy. So if you, um, you uh, had bulky lymph nodes or your blood counts were poor and you started IV chemotherapy, you would get treatment, they would call it cycles. So you would get a treatment approximately once a month, depending upon the regimen. It would last six months and you'd be done. You, it would shrink your lymph nodes and improve your blood counts. You might get a complete remission to the treatment. Okay, it depends on the treatment. And that complete remission means that there was no evidence of the leukemia after you were done with treatment. Doesn't mean you were cured, just means that we couldn't find any CLL. Or you might've gotten a partial response. The blood counts got better, the lymph node shrank, but there's still some leukemia there. And then you were observed again until the disease acted up again that you needed treatment. So again, poor blood counts or bulky lymph nodes. Abrutinib is different. When abrutinib got approved as an oral therapy, essentially you would take medication once a day um, and the same goal would be to improve your blood counts and to shrink your lymph nodes. But patients have stayed on, so what we look at this as a slightly different strategy, is right now the way this drug is being used is that you stay on therapy chronically. So if you're on a blood pressure medicine or on medicine for heart disease, you would take it chronically once a day as long as your disease was responding or, um, or unless you had a side effect to the drug. So if there was a problem and you were having a side effect, we'd stop the drug. Or if your disease was no longer responsive to the therapy, of course, then you would change therapy. So there's two different, there's certainly two different strategies because you have still some chemotherapy, which is short in duration, about six months. And then you have a brutinib, which is indefinite right now. We're working on that. So, um, so people take it chronically once a day, okay? Now, those approaches, um, what we're trying to define right now is can we, figure out a way that people don't necessarily have to be on these oral agents indefinitely. So there's lots of clinical trials that are running that are looking at combination strategies with abrutinib uh, to see if we can enhance response a little quicker, perhaps get to complete remissions quicker, and then give time limited durations of therapy. In other words, just be on abrutinib for a period of time. And if there's no disease, stop therapy. The disease comes back again, restart therapy. So these are all in the development. This is all in the context of clinical trials that we're running now, okay? Now people also ask, well, what's better to start? Should I start chemoimmunotherapy or should I start the pill first? Because it's approved for everybody. Um, and there are some clinical trials that are actually looking at uh, randomization, looking at patients that were randomized to get FCR, let's say, for example, versus abrutinib. Um, and then we will see if one is better to start for another. I think that there's data emerging that depending upon the features of somebody's disease, we may say besides the 17P, which is a no brainer, you have a 17P, you should get a brutinib, you shouldn't get FCR, you shouldn't get chemoimmunotherapy. But for other subsets, we're learning about different markers and features about people's disease where we may say, going to a novel approach is better than traditional chemoimmunotherapy. And this has to do with some of the other testing that we run on patients routinely. It's called the IGVH test. And so for patients who are unmutated, um, which is less favorable than pati patients who have a mutated IGVH, a lot of us will steer them to a novel combination, such as with abrutinib or others, versus chemoimmunotherapy because the response duration may not last as long. And so I think there'll be emerging data about that. That's not routine clinical practice, but I think that that's an important feature. So that's an important part of the testing that all patients should have as well before initiating any therapy. So FISH and their IGVH status is very important. Um, in terms of other therapies, there are lots of different choices for patients with CLL, um, but part of that also depends on somebody's other medical problems too. So how you choose between, if you don't have a 17P uh, and you're more favorable but still need treatment, do you choose for chemoimmunotherapy or abrutinib? 
Part of that has to do with some comorbidities, what other medical problems a patient may have, what other medicines are they on, do they have risk for bleeding complications. So you take into effect the side effects of treatment regimens along with the patient. And you have that discussion with patients. There are some patients that absolutely I will steer to a certain treatment because I think it's better for their disease, certainly if they can tolerate it. But others, if they're less clear, then it's about patient preference and expectations of therapy. What are you trying to achieve? What side effects the therapy may have? Uh, and then you have to have that open dialogue with your patient and make a decision.